Hey guys, welcome to another Q&A session from the Reaper blog. In this one, I'll be answering some questions on sound design, the MIDI editor, and automation. Before we get started, I want to thank you all for watching, sharing, liking, commenting, and subscribing to the channel. It really means a lot to me. And special thanks to my patrons whose financial support helps keep things running smoothly. Shout out to my top patrons, Mark, Gerald, Marco, Jean-Marc, Igor, Luca, Ryan, Matt, John, Brian, and Glenn. Thank you guys so much. If you want to support the channel and get some extra bonus content, head over to patreon.com slash the Reaper blog, sign up as a patron. I actually posted five bonus videos there in May, and I tend to keep that up. So head over there and get everything. First question comes from Andrew. Please give us a quick rundown on how you did that door sound. It's magical. And he's talking about the door turned into a horror pad. And besides Andrew's comment, uh, I had a lot of other comments. Damn, that door squeak is meaty. Creepiest door ever. That door, I want it played at my funeral. That made me really happy to, to see you guys liked that. I don't remember exactly what went into doing that. It, uh, I did it all very quickly. And I know that I started off from a, uh, a effects chain that I had saved in a previous sort of timed challenge thing. I wrote that into the script way before I filmed the video. That was one of the last things I filmed. And then in the video editing, I actually had to do that sound design and I just printed it really quickly and um, then moved on to the next thing because it was like three days making that video. I didn't have a lot of time. But I will show you what I can remember from the process here. All right, so here's the original audio. I, I just glued that section. The original recording was a few minutes long. So here's the, the, the squeaking sound. Be good if I could hear it. All right, so the first thing I need to do is is boost it up. It's it's just way too quiet. Um, and then I would normally stretch it out to two or four times longer. Um, I have a button on my toolbar that, and then I have another button to turn off preserve pitch. So now that I've doubled its length, it is now playing half as half the speed and an octave down. So now it sounds like this. Then I wanted to listen to it through an effects chain that I had made earlier. And it's not this exact one that I ended up with, but I have one saved as Horror Scream. And it's Valhalla Shimmer, Redelay, uh, adding more stereo width to that, um, 12 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds, and then recomp. So here it is through that effects chain. So I know it's not exactly that. Uh, I'm pretty sure I used a, a medium stereo uh, mode. It may have been a blend. So let's say it was that. Um, it's not exactly what I did. But I know that I played it on a keyboard for the actual video. So I'm just going to insert a virtual instrument on a new track and bring up the uh, resample matic and I'm going to take this file and I'm going to import from a range. I don't think we actually get that pitch and time stretching automatically. Uh, I may have glued another version of it originally, but we'll just leave it for now. Note semitone shifted, we want it on, and we've got it on four voices. Um, attack and release, let's slow down the attack. Um, I'm gonna have to turn up the volume probably. 
yeah, let's just see how this goes. Obey node offs. We do need to move that effects chain over here so it's after the virtual instrument. So that was an alt drag. And so here's what I have now. Okay, so this needs more um, more character. I'm pretty sure that I used deca uh, decapitator on here after the um, after the sampler. Let's go an octave lower. So it's something like that. Not exactly that, but that's generally how I'd approach something. I find out how it sounds pitched down, um, slowed down. Uh, those those shortcuts that I showed you there are really just in the item properties. Um, so I, um, I changed the playback rate with a shortcut, and I unchecked preserve pitch when changing rate. Resample-matic is going to be like that automatically, so if you play something lower than its original pitch, then it's going to be longer and it's going to be pitched down. So what I, I should have really taken my own advice, I did partly because I started from a saved track uh, effects chain that I had made earlier, but I didn't remember to save the effects chain after I got a cool sound. Um, I could probably go back through system backups or something to, uh, to find the exact tone, but it's just gonna take too long, I think. All right, the next question comes from Carlos. One question I have about the drum editing part. How did you get it to left drag and respect the subdivision of the grid like that? Mine just draws a flurry of notes. So this is, again, from that other video. Um, I was showing my 15-minute uh, songwriting challenge. Um, I've actually posted the full video uh, publicly now, so if you want to uh, see what he's talking about there, there's a link. Um, and several other people have been asking since I posted the full video. So let's look at the drawing of notes first. And so what they were asking about is if I was in my drum editing mode, um, I just hold down command and it draws in notes based on the grid length, right? So I've got it on 16th, I have this on quarters, it would be like this. And so they were asking, you know, how do you do that? The, that's not the default. We're going to go into Preferences and Mouse Modifiers under Editing Behavior. So for MIDI, Piano Roll Context, and Left Drag, so I have mine set to paint a straight line of notes, or when you're looking at it like this, uh, paint notes in a line. So that's not the default. You need to change that. It's such a fast way of working. And somewhat related to that, Wesley also asked me, how to make trap hi-hats using split notes to grid. So if you're in a different MIDI editor view, like just the normal piano roll view, and you put in a quarter note, let's say like, like that. Let's put in two quarter notes here. We want to change those to um, like a triplet. So we would change our grid to triplet and let's say eighths, and then I have a shortcut Alt S that's going to split that um, on the triplet grid. Um, I also have a button. Let me undo that. I have a button on my uh, MIDI editor toolbar, this one here, split notes on grid, same thing. But also if you have your grid set and, and everything, you could just use that, that, that mouse modifier that I just showed you. And so that's gonna put those notes on the triplet grid by just dragging. So that action's in the uh, MIDI editor, action list, split notes on grid. Pretty simple stuff, but if you don't have this already set up or you don't know about it, this is gonna save you so much time. Got a question from Jasek. He actually posted a video. My question is, is it possible to control a selection um, 
you know, vo volume envelope selection with a MIDI knob, you know, to, to make it go up and down the way it works with this knob. So he's asking, how do you adjust a volume envelope segment using a MIDI controller? This is actually really simple to set up. I had these custom actions already made. Uh, I just had to combine them together into one custom action that works with a MIDI controller. Um, so I had one that, um, I'll just show you here, uh, one that goes up and another one that goes down, and it goes 2 dB each time I press it. Uh, but he wanted it to work with a MIDI controller, which I think I've got set up already. <laughs> there it is. I already have it set up, uh, but I'm going to show you what that action is. So let's open up the action list, and I'll move my MIDI controller. And so this looks like this. So I just selected envelope section using mouse wheel or MIDI. And so select envelope at mouse cursor. So it's going to follow whatever your mouse is hovering over. So whether that's a item envelope or volume or pan or any uh, effect parameter um, that the envelope is visible, hover your mouse over there, you move the MIDI controller, and then it will do the next bunch of actions. It will insert four envelope points at the time selection, and that will be ignored if there's already points in the time selection edges. Skip next action if CC parameter is less than zero. So if it's less than zero, it's going to skip the next action. Um, but if it's not less than zero, it's going to move the points up. And then skip next action if CC parameter is over zero, move selected points down a little bit. So this is going to have to be done with a relative mode on the MIDI controller. So I have a mode on my Arturia, um, like mode two, I have all the knobs set to a relative mode. And in Reaper, that's a relative two. Um, but depending on the controller you're using, it will be a different relative mode. I think um, I think my Nocturne, when I have it on relative or the um, increment mode, it has to be on relative one. Uh, so it's going to be different, but it's going to be one of those relative modes that you'll want to use. Absolute's not going to work here. So once you set it up, it's like this. Sometimes they get stuck down to the bottom. I think that's just a weird thing with this controller. Um, but, you know, experiment with it. That's, that's the only way you'll be able to do this. There isn't a, a built-in function. And these actions here, the uh, skip next actions, those will work with any pair of, um, of custom actions or actions. Anything you want to do, like plus one or minus one with, with two directions on a knob or mouse wheel, uh, you can do that. So there's a lot of things you could do with that. I actually have a video on uh, different nudge functions using um, those kinds of ideas. So uh, check that out. There'll be a link in the description below. The next question comes from CBD Recording, how to automate the whole effects chain on and off. So if this is in the middle of the mix, you want to work quickly. And for me, the easiest way to do this is just split that audio and put it on another track or, or bypass it and print it or something like that. We have unlimited tracks in Reaper, so um, you know, don't worry about automating it, especially doing it manually. But if I really had to do this with automation, um, as something that I needed to do multiple times in the song, then I would set this up with a macro controller, JSFX. I actually added one to Repack uh, quite a while ago. You just link all the bypass buttons or the wet dry knobs to a single parameter in the macro knob controller. And uh, there's just one thing to automate. So I'll show you that now. Here's a little effects chain. It's just three plugins. Now we want these three checkboxes to uh, be automated easily throughout the mix. And you probably know that you could click this power button, but that's not something that can be automated. It has to be these, these checkboxes or, or this one. Or wet dry would probably work as well. Uh, but we'll just do these ones here. So first, let's get in that uh, macro knob controller. You can probably find this if you have um, Repack installed um, under the Reteam um, category. That's how I have mine categorized, but um, you know, just look for like Reaper blog and you'll find this controller. All this plugin does is just give you five sliders that you can link to other things. It doesn't process any audio in any way. Um, it's not going to mess anything up. It's just, just something that you can link 
to multiple things like so you can have um we could have four bypass buttons on this and you can link that to uh, a midi controller or link it to uh, the automation lane so to set this up to actually bypass we're going to click the bypass button we're going to prem and you can see at the top last touched bypass i'm going to set this to parameter modulation midi link um, link to MIDI or effects parameter, click on where it says none and go down to the Reaper blog macro effects controller, set that to macro one. And we don't need to adjust the scaling or anything like that. We're going to go down to the next one, uh, click that parameter MIDI link, link to a uh, the same thing. And again, macro controller one, one more to do, click that parameter link link macro one now when i adjust this when i have this on 100 percent, those three are bypassed i pull it back now they are uh enabled and so with the last touch thing again i can go to i can either show it in the track controls like that i just close all these windows so i can have a, a knob on the track that controls that or I can show the envelope, envelope, whichever you want to call it. And, and then we can just automate that. Do that. And so those effects turn on and off uh, over time. So I think if that's something that you need to do multiple times in a project, it's a pretty simple thing to do. I don't really have any way of making that faster. Um, other than using keyboard shortcuts to actually open up the modulation window. I, there's probably a script that makes that easier, but I, off the top of my head, I don't remember what it would be called. And that's it for the questions this time. If you have any questions for me uh, about Reaper or anything really, leave them in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Join our Facebook group, Reaper Blog Community. Support the Reaper Blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.